You've heard the story of Jesus going to Martha's house. Now, Jesus came along and it says that, you know, his disciples were with him. It says that, you know, they were with him. That could be 12 disciples. That could be even more. Uh, who knows if he was talking about the original 12. But they showed up at her house. And I can imagine preparing uh, food and beds and all that kind of stuff for 12 kind of surprise guests would be a lot of work. And Martha immediately goes to work for these. you think that would be a good thing. Here, here she is working. And I don't think the problem is the work. I don't think the problem is that, you know, these things have to get done. But it says in Luke verse 40, it says, But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. And Martha goes on to complain about it. She goes on to say, Hey, Jesus, like... Mary, she's just sitting at your feet there, and look at me. I'm I'm here doing all the work. Like I'm doing all the good stuff. Why can't Why can't she come help me? What's What's the deal? And Jesus responded to Martha. I'm trying not to read here while I'm driving, but I'll I'll read and look up a few times here. She says, "You are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better." And it will not be taken away from her. Mary has chosen what is better. Now, what the heck does that mean? Does that mean that the stuff that Martha's doing, you know, cooking for people, putting people up in her in her house, like those are bad things? I don't think so. In fact, if you read this in Luke chapter 10, right before this story about Martha, Martha and Mary, is the story of the Good Samaritan, where a guy does just that. He, he puts somebody up in, that he finds on the side of the road. He finds this guy beaten up and robbed on the side of the road. And, and, and he takes him to, uh, I don't know, a hotel or something and, and takes care of him. So I don't think Jesus is saying that that's bad stuff. But what I think he's saying is when we fill our lives, when our lives are so busy and full, even with good things, we mess out on the great and amazing things that God could do in our life. I don't know about you, but I don't want to. I don't want to just do good things and miss out on the great. As our life is more centered around Christ and not centered around this busyness, I believe we can have that full life that Jesus promises. He says, "You know, I have come to give you life and life to the full." When our life is full of busyness, I don't think we have life to the full. I don't think that's what he means. But what he means by full life is a life that is enriched and led by him. Where the stuff in us that destroys us is being killed away by Jesus. That is the full life. Now, I've been reading this book. Uh, where is it here? It's called, uh, it's called Refuel. It's by Doug Field. It's a little book. As you can see, I accidentally uh, dropped it in the lake at the Sampsons, but I can still read it, which is good. Uh, it was given to me by Jerry and... It's been a fantastic book for me to reconnect with God. You know, I can even get busy. I do it all the time. I, I get so wrapped up in my own busyness, my own, uh, my own work, that I can even, believe it or not, a, a, as a pastor, forget to connect with God. This book here, Refuel, gives a way to connect with God on a regular basis. And I just want to share a little bit with that of you. I think maybe in the fall we might, might delve deeper into this idea of re refuel. But it gives us a great way to connect with God. And I, I don't really believe, like, you know, if you do this A, B, and C, then God will be in your life. But this does give us some ideas, and I, I believe scriptural ideas, of how to connect with God. When you were in uh, elementary school, and I was there once too many, many years ago, Chances are you had the, the fire safety people come in. I, I don't know if you had this. I did when I was in school. Maybe they don't do it anymore. But they come in and they tell you, you know, how you get out of your house if there's a fire and, and all those kind of things. Uh, make sure your smoke detectors are, you know, got batteries in them, all, all that kind of stuff. And then they teach you this lesson, what you should do if you, if your actual body or your clothes get, get caught on fire. And, and you know this, right? Like, the, it's a very simple thing. They say stop, drop, and roll. Well, what I'm going to share with you about connecting with God is very, very similar. 
It's stop, be quiet, and connect. Well, first off, we need to stop. The, the number one thing you need to do in this busy life to, to stop the busyness is just to stop. It's a fairly simple idea. Our lives are, are jam-packed with stuff. It, you know, we, we wake up, we fill our lives with busyness, and then we go to sleep. We, uh, the only time we stop probably is uh, when we sleep or e even when we, maybe when we eat. Although we even have those things like Tim Hortons drive through so we don't have to stop to eat. We can just eat on the way and eat while we're busy. So we pack our lives with this stuff, and, and sometimes it's really hard just to stop, spend some time stopping. So that's a difficult thing to ask. That's the first thing I want to ask and challenge you to do this week, today, is to stop. Just stop. Second thing I want you to do is maybe even harder for you, and that's be quiet. There is so much noise in our life, so much junk that clutters up our ears and, and our eyes. I mean, you got iPods, you listen to music. Some of you even like listen to music to go to sleep. I remember going in high school, I had a friend who literally he could not get to sleep unless he was had the noise of the TV in the background. So he'd turn the TV on his room and the TV would go on uh, till, till he went to sleep. And, and back then, you know, TV didn't go all night necessarily. I know that's a really long time ago. So like he would wake up to the fuzz of the TV because, you know, it was, uh, the shows were over and he'd have to turn the TV off. But we fill our lives with so much noise, it's, it's difficult to be quiet. And not just audible noise. I mean, we, we also have this visual noise of, of Facebook and texting and, and all the things we do that just kind of fill our, our life and distract us from things. One of the most spiritual things you can do is stop and be quiet. Because God so often speaks in a still, small voice. And we can't hear that voice if we're not quiet. We can't hear what he's trying to say to us. 